Hey everyone, welcome to the Pace Studio in New York City. We're here with Justin Towns Earl. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> We're happy to have you back. <laughs> yeah, glad to be here. Excellent. Uh, so you have a new record coming out. Um, it's called Kids in the Street, due out May 26th on New West Records. Um, are you going to be playing some new songs for us today? Uh, I think so. Okay. <laughs> new to us, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> What's the first one you've got for us? We're going to do Champagne Corolla. Whenever you're ready. high in a seat way back like she should be driving something long and black oh, I'm asking oh, do you know uh, how pretty little thing you drive that champagne Corolla I seen her around here just last night today she been by two three times ain't you listening to I done told you Pretty little thing that drive that champagne Corolla So now nice the boys on the corner Did they know they said how many of them things you think is out on the road I say the one I mean If you seen her you would know it. Pretty little thing drive that champagne aesthetics first of all this is your first record that does not feature you with some other woman on <laughs> the cover yes um tell us about that stylistic direction and the symbolism with that it, it really was just a uh, one photographer has taken pretty much every picture of me that you can find uh, okay. except for live shots but anything that's stock for uh publicity or for a record cover has been shot by one person and we were we were just sitting around one day just trying to figure out what we were going to do for my first record cover. And it was a very frustrating day that we were just, no, that's stupid. No, that's stupid. I said, well, how about we just put me and a girl on the cover? And he goes, he thought about it for a minute. He goes, okay, but nobody you're sleeping with. And I said, that's probably a really good 
good thing. You don't want to, you know, look at every, hate that record every time you look at it years later. And, uh, and so, yeah, it really just came up as a fluke and a conversation. And we kind of just decided that, you know, he kind of, he kind of wanted it to be like a, he was like, it's like Bond girls. I'm like, no, it's not like <laughs> Bond girls, but it's something like that, <laughs> you know? So, so with this one, it was just like, we're getting rid of that series. Yeah. It's just you. Well, the last record that had a woman on it was my wife. Yes. And so I figure that's, that's where it ends. Okay. Yeah. That, that works. So kind of similarly, uh, this is the first record that you've written um, after getting married. Um, and a lot of the themes are much more uplifting, um, especially in contrast to a lot of your older, sadder works that have certainly helped me and many others get through tough times. Um, what, what are some of the other circumstances that led to this uh, lyrical and musical change, evolution? I think that getting out of, uh, I moved, I moved west. I, I lived on the coast in Northern California for, for a while, which slowed me down quite a bit. Um, I am very, very happily married, which, which makes, makes a huge difference, but it's still processing things that happened. Um, there's a song on the new record called 15 to 25, and that's basically the time period that this record deals with, hmm. is, is between those ages. And so while I, I definitely see something, I'm, I'm, seeing the, I'm definitely seeing the brighter side of things in a lot of ways now. But still making sure that, you know, it's like I'm, I still haven't processed up to, you know, 25 yet. So it's changing my point of view, which I find, which is great because I'm not quite through processing all that stuff that happened. And you can only say it so many ways looking at it from one perspective. Mm -hmm. you know, and so it's, it's definitely helped a lot and, and seen just and and I think that's just I got a daughter on the way. I'm married. You know, it's like I'm congratulations. Yeah. I, Married once and one child on the way. That's pretty good for 35 years old and an earl. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next song you're going to play for us today? Uh, we're going to do uh, Maybe a Moment, I believe. Okay. I'm just going to make sure this guitar is in tune. So I, it's a somewhat memorable moment for a good reason. Good enough. <laughs> Get in the car from with me. You know there's nothing to do around here during the weekend, so we're going to Memphis to mess around. Going to Memphis to get out of town. I got a bottle of Thunderbird in the trunk I know a place if there's anything you want This old man runs a store, he'll sell anything to anyone But I don't know what time he closes up and So think about it, but baby don't take me too much time Maybe only a moment, but maybe the time of your life Boys might look rough, but they're not tough between me and you Though they can be crude Like the girl less than's going on about Well, you just said she's got a pretty mouth So you see All oh, what I'm dealing with How's the old saying go With friends like this Time you like 
I know your brother, he don't scare me Why should we tell your mama anything? If I'm bothering you, let me know But ain't we damn near grown? Maybe it's Tuesday Maybe it's damn near midnight Maybe only a moment Maybe the time you lie Maybe only a moment but Maybe the time you lie I'm glad you played that song. Uh, one, because it's one of my favorites off the new record, uh, but also because it it brings up something I wanted to ask you about, uh, which is, it seems like there's a lot of reminiscing on Memphis um, across this record, uh, from as early as this song, which is second on the record, to um, the bonus track called Graceland. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the influence of place, specifically on this record. Memphis in particular, if you were a young, reckless kid that was didn't have anybody really watching over you and you liked punk rock music you that didn't happen in nashville we had one little tiny record store called uh, lucy's record shop that did that would do some shows but very few bands would actually pass through um so you had to go to memphis to see some of the bigger punk bands and and to see and there were like bands in memphis at that point like a band called big ass truck which Bits and Pieces are in uh, Lucero now and uh, and other bands. and But they uh, we would pile into whoever we could find that had a car. It would be a six, maybe the oldest person, 16, and everybody else ranging from 12 to 16. Uh, and we'd go to Memphis. You know, we'd leave at 8 o'clock at night and drive to Memphis to catch midnight shows. And, Which is not a short drive. No, and try to get back for school. <laughs> Which we usually would just stay in Memphis. <laughs> I would try to do that from southeastern Virginia to D.C. and back sometimes. Never yeah. Never worked. <laughs> um, well, you also mentioned that uh, you moved west um, in between records lately. Um, and you even recorded this in Omaha. Can you tell us about uh, finding and working with Mike Mogus? Working with Mogus was very... was was very it was interesting it was very enlightening in a lot of ways it was something that i was definitely you know there i I can't lie about the fact that i was i was not you know i wasn't super pleased with the idea of working with a producer in the first place you know it took a while for them to get me on board with it because you know i took the stance it's like i'm making my eighth record why do i need a producer now you know but you know that's what record labels and anr people are for (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, and so they could finally convince me of, they bring me Mike Mogus and Mike had done two of my favorite things, records, uh, in the past, you know, 10 years, which is he mixed M Ward's hold time, which is an incredible sounding rich record. And he recorded Jenny Lewis's rabbit rabbit for coat record. Mm-hmm. And those those records just sound absolutely incredible and rich, um, you know. And and so there, that's what got me there. Um, and then, but I ended up working with his musicians, not Nashville musicians, for the first time. Um, and you have to ask a Nashville musician to not be predictable, <laughs> do something unpredictable, which they'll do. They can do it. You have to say, do something. These guys just were unpredictable you know, what they were going to do, the players, you know, not that that, not in a bad way. It was just like, oh, well, that's not what I would have done, you know, but it's that whole, that whole school that's grown up around, around Mike and Connor and, and all those people, this, um, I needed that they were properly focused in folk and blues music. They understood the sound of an acoustic guitar, yet you, I needed from Mike that kind of, Mike will always have this kind of super, indie new age rocker fuck you about him that he will always put across he loves he loves that he likes taking a perfectly classic sounding track and then inserting something in there that you would not expect and making it work and blend and uh and it was a great experience yeah just working with him and seeing the way that he 
the way that his mind works because it's very it's a interesting place and then you went home to portland yeah interesting yeah how's the west coast the northwest in particular treating you i like it a lot it's been it's been really nice i mean the uh laws are laxer and uh but it's you know i i like the rain so it doesn't bother me very much hopefully hopefully my wife adjusts to it <laughs> true true what's the last song you're gonna play for us today uh let's do uh trouble is job waiting for me up in Chicago I don't start in the weeks the day after tomorrow got me all packed up and now I'm ready to go only trouble is ain't got no wheels to roll Always giving me the evil eye She says she don't like me But she won't tell me why She says she feels she need to watch me day and night Only trouble is The bitch is right Trouble in love, trouble in life Trouble by day, trouble by night City for a hot minute um, and coming back for a show next month. Um, yes. When you're back up here, do you get Harlem River Blues like flashbacks emotionally? I, you know, this living in New York, I, I never intended to ever leave New York. Really? Yeah, and, and I never, and you know, I made the mistake. I didn't, I left for the wrong girl. The good thing that happened is if, if later though, if I hadn't have left, I wouldn't have met the right girl there later. You go. There you go. You know, but still, there's no there's no part of the city really that I don't that I don't miss. I mean, even the things that as it changes, it's the pace and the way that life works in the city. Um, this is a life or death city. You know, it is. It's like you 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 screw up, you can end up cold, damp, and naked really fast. <laughs> well, you always have a place of refuge here, <laughs> surrounded by many good tapes. Yeah. Um, well, what's coming up for you in the meantime? Uh, Where are you going to be? I'm going to be, well, I'm going back to Portland in a couple days, start rehearsals with the uh, taking the Sadies out as my backing band nice. for this uh, for this out for this tour. So um, start getting, which I imagine rehearsals are going to be real easy because they always come prepared. And uh, and yeah, so I'm just going to do that. And I'm hoping that, you know, we got the tour coming up. Hopefully the baby doesn't come early. Here's to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, we love working with you at Pace, so come back anytime. Well, thank you so much.